G'day, my name's Chris, and well, thanks for clicking on the link. In a second, you're about to see a shorter segment from a larger show that I did this last Monday. So if you enjoy this, consider subscribing, thanks. And otherwise, yeah, check out the link wherever it may be, and yeah, I'll hope to see you over there. It's a good news for Victoria, nay, Australia. Energy Australia is bringing forward its Yolon coal power plant closure. This power plant is rated at 1480 megawatts and supplies about 20% of Victoria's electricity demand or 8% to the national electric electricity market. In the last year, they emitted more than 40 million tonnes of CO2. Originally slated for retirement in 2032, it will now, due to a government mandated minimum 7 year notice period, be decommissioned mid-2028. In Energy Australia's press release, they cited that renewable energy has driven down daytime electricity prices, which is difficult for them to operate and increasingly struggling to compete with renewables. And so what does one do? If you can't beat them, join them? Yeah, that's right. Energy Australia announced that it will build a 350 megawatt battery and a $10 million support package for workers to help them transition to new jobs or retire. Now, unlike these Murdoch spruikers, which claim that blackouts will result as well as higher prices, can I just say to them, the Yalon power station broke down 37 times in the last two years. 85% of electricity price hikes after the Hazelwood closure was due to like a reduced competition at that time. They, they can read, you can read, everyone can read them. Energy, like the Australian Energy Regulators Report below where you'll find more information about this and what a lot more. So the big new battery that's gonna be over in the States East and last week they talked about the one in the West. Man, this is all happening. Plus, get this, in the next few years, Victoria will have more than 5,000 megawatts of power added. So this garbage about more blackouts is completely false. In fact, the South Australian experience with the Tesla big battery over there has shown that blackouts have actually decreased and energy security improved through that as well as the VPP project in Adelaide. And time for one last story. SpaceX launched another Falcon 9 rocket with 60 Starlink internet satellites into orbit. This latest mission means that New Zealand has been added to countries where you can get Starlink as well as Germany. When I last reported on Starlink, Elon said that speeds for this service would be up to about 150 megabits per second. And well, since then, he's bumped it up to a massive 300 megabits per second and only 20 millisecond delay. Beta testers who are quite active over on uh, subreddit forum have um, been getting these speeds and better and worse. They've all been reporting a lot of dropouts. Now, this is expected as Elon and Starlink have been very clear that at the moment, the service roller is in beta and more satellites uh, as they launch will improve this service. Asked about coverage, Elon said that most of Earth by the end of year or by next year, then it's about densifying coverage. Important to note that cellular will always have the advantage in dense urban areas. Satellites are best for low to medium population density areas. And this I think has been cemented by a story run by ABC News in early February who did a bit of super sleuthing. They revealed that in August 2020 a company called Tibro, Tibro Australia, was granted a carrier license allowing it to operate the telecommunications provider. Then two months later Tibro, which actually spells Orbit backwards changed its name to Starlink Australia. Starlink Australia secured radio communication licenses allowing it to send like wireless signals and here's more evidence of supporting remote communities with great internet. Starlink's Australian land-based facilities are located in regional remote areas such as Wagan in West Australia, Pimba in South Australia and Broken Hill and Buroa in New South Wales. And here are some photos. Are those what I'm thinking B1? I think they are B2. Those are Starlink receiver dishes. Ah oh, yes. So again, I'm confused. Or are other people confused? Those who live in suburbia, this ain't for you because I reckon you probably get better internet generally from MBN, albeit mm, ZMBM. Conversely, if Elon can get this um, coverage really good, dropouts infrequent or never, and it's going at 200, 250 megabits per second, I'll sign up.